Alrighty, everybody. So today we're going to be talking about dimensional analysis again, but now two steps. So we're going to be converting between multiple units, not just two. So sometimes you have to convert between multiple units to get to the final unit you want to find. We just don't have the conversion factor, or you don't know the conversion factor, or it's just easier to go between multiple uh, units. The trick with doing multiple dimensional analysis multi-steps is just to keep doing the same thing, right? You're going to keep lining up conversion factors in the calculations so that the units cancel and the desired unit ends up on top. So for example, if I wanted to convert from unit A to unit C, and I know a conversion between unit A and unit B, and unit B and unit C, I would create something like this, where I know unit A, I know a conversion factor between unit A and unit B, and then I know a conversion factor between unit B and unit C. So I'm going to line up my unit A on the denominator, unit B on the numerator, that way that my initial, what I know, unit, unit A, will cancel out. And then in my second conversion factor, I'm going to put unit B on the bottom so that it cancels with unit A, with unit B, and then unit C on the top because that's also my desired unit and that's what I want to find. I want that to end up on top. When we do it like this, unit A cancels with unit A, unit B cancels with unit B, and I'm left with unit C, the desired unit. So let's do an example. How many centimeters are the same as 268 feet, given that 2.54 centimeters is equal to one inch? Okay. So here, I know how many inches are in a foot, so I can go from feet to inches, and then I was just told how many centimeters are in an inch, so I can go from inches to centimeters. So if I line this up, remember we always start with what we know, 268 feet. Then I'm going to put my feet to inches conversion factor in this next setup where I'm going to put feet in the, in the denominator, one foot, and 12 inches in the numerator. My feet will cancel out leaving me with inches and now I can use this new conversion factor that I was given in the problem, 2.54 centimeters is equal to one inch. If I put one inch on the bottom, I can put 2.54 centimeters on the top. This way my feet cancel, my inches cancel, and I'm left with centimeters. If I type this into the calculator, uh, what I'm going to type into the calculator, if you recall, we said that everything on in the numerator is multiplied and everything in the bottom, the denominator, is divided. Now, in this setup, I only have ones on the bottom, so I don't even need to divide because anything divided by one is whatever it was. So I'm just going to take 268, multiply it by 12, multiply it by 2.54, and I'm going to get 80. 8,168.64 centimeters. Now my that's my calculator answer, that's not my final answer because I need to round the appropriate number of significant figures. If you remember, our sig figs are going to come from our known value here, the 268 feet, not from our conversion factors. Our conversion factors are known quantities and therefore they have infinite significant figures. So our significant figure limit is going to come from our question, 268 feet. So rounding this to three sig figs means I'm going to have to stop at this third sig fig of six, eight rounds six up to seven, and I get 8,170 centimeters. Or 8.17 times 10 to the three centimeters if I wanted to write it in scientific notation. Okay, let's look at another example. Because right now we've um, used a lot of known conversion factors, but I'd also like to highlight and utilize metric system conversion factors. So this next question asks how many pascals, or PA, is equivalent to 5.48 atmospheres? This is talking about pressure. And I give you a conversion factor that says that there are 101.3 kilopascals, or kPa, equal to one atmosphere. So kilopascals sounds like kilo, that's in our metric system conversion, so this is going to be a metric system conversion. We're going to start with what we know, 
Oh, sorry. Um, we're going to start with what we know, which is atmospheres. We know that we can convert atmospheres into kilopascals or kPa. And then since we know kilopascals is on the metric system, we should be able to convert back to the base unit of pascals. So I'm going to go atmospheres to kilopascals, kilopascals to pascals. So I start with what I know, 5.48 atmospheres. Type in that conversion factor with one atmosphere on the bottom and 101.3 kPa on the top. Then I'm going to convert my kPa, my pascals, my pA. So we know that for every one kilopascal, there is one times 10 to the three pascals, right? A kilopascal is bigger than a pascal. It is, so there's one times 10 to the three or a thousand pascals in a kilopascal. We look at trying to cancel this out. Atmospheres cancel with atmospheres. KPA cancels with KPA, leaving us with pascals. Multiply everything on top, divide everything on bottom, 5.48 times 101.3 times 1 times 10 to the third, and you get 555,124 pascals. Round into the appropriate sig figs. I ignore my conversion factors because those are known quantities. I look at my 5.48, that has three sig figs. So my third sig figs, it's gonna be the 555, that's my third sig fig. One is not going to round up. So my answer is going to be 555,000 or 5.55 times 10 to the 5 pascals. So again, this is just a lot of the same um, what we're doing. We're just taking it one step further. We're adding on an additional step, going from one step to two step. See you tomorrow.